hello. I have come to do a little craft let's create video and um, Nick the Booksmith started this. She did a video a while back using the um, Sizzix Tim Holtz sewn Oh, I've just been looking at it and I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's got little slits in for you to pop things in and it's got faux stitching around the side and it was marvellous. So the first thing I did was went on to um, the internet to see um, if I was going to buy one and I am I am absolutely on a, on a non-essential spend freeze so um, I couldn't buy one and I've seen someone else use it recently and it just made me want it again so I decided I would make one and here I am today to show you how I did it it's really really straightforward um, but these are there is a little stopper in the bottom here so your, your bits aren't going to fall out and I've just popped these few bits in so you can see this one obviously will come all the way through because this will be glued to a page so I'm not worried about a little stopper there so let me show you how I made it um, you'll need a cutting board um, this is obviously not working perfectly but you do need one really with the little guides the little guides here and I haven't got any craft cards so I've pulled a page out of an album which I'm using so the first thing is just simply cut this 10 centimeters by 13 centimeters and I have no idea if this is the right size because I've never seen I've never seen one. This is just my version. So I don't know if this is right or not. Now I use, this is an X cut ruler and it's the centering ruler. It's the one with the metal edge. This I had to buy this recently because my last one kind of died a death really. Um, yeah, so I like this ruler because it's got the guides on it. You can obviously measure, you do not have to have this ruler. Um, but what I did was I've just gone two squares in and I've drawn a line and I'll do the same on the other side this is quite quick so hopefully um, we'll get this done really quickly today and then what I did is I come down um, three squares from the top did I or did I come down two what did I do with it let me check yeah so it came down three squares from the top and then I did four squares for three more lines. So there's one, two, three, four, and then I draw my score, my line. And the same again. Now, because my cutting board is not perfect, some of my cutting lines are not perfect, but you know, I quite like it. So on the back, you will have something that looks a bit like that. Now comes the cutting board. And this is the bit that's gonna be a bit difficult for me because um, I have my head right over the top of this so I can see. Let me just make sure. Yeah, right. So what I do is um, line up my guide with my first line. I bring my trimmer down and line it up with the side line that I've made. And then I push it in place and I drag it to the second guide. Then I very carefully lifted that up and moved it along. And again, push it down and push it back. Now I can't stick my head right over because you'll see I haven't had my roots done. <laughs> um, and that is how I cut my little, my little pockets. Oh. Now, I hope the fact that I haven't stuck my head over, they're fairly even. They're not too bad. They're not too bad. So now we have this. And learn from my mistakes. This is probably when you want to ink these bits here. Not when you've got it, um, when you've got the little, I'll show you the little flappy bits that I'm going to stick inside in a minute. <coughs> now. Um, you'll probably want to spend a little bit more time getting your inking a little bit neater than I'm doing right now. <laughs> I mean, you can very slightly fold it or bend it just slightly. It's going to have a rustic look, but I'm good with that. 
I'm good with that. Now before I ink around the edge, I'm going to take my small corner chopper and I'm going to go around those. And now I'm going to ink the edge and because it is craft card, I'm using the ground espresso. I'm not using vintage photo. I want this to have quite a dark look. I know the vintage photo looks pretty cool on the craft but well this is not craft card, um, same colour, same meat, different gravy, as they say. So there we go, that's phase two. So um, if I remember rightly, I think I cut the next bit to nine centimetres, yeah. So get my cutter out now you can use you could use copier paper it would work just as well but I'm using a sheet of the this is acid free um, photo album paper and I'm going to start that side and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut to I think it was 11 11 centimetres and I'm just going to cut a couple of strips at 11 centimetres and then I'm going to cut to 9 I'm going to check so our little slit is 8 centimetres so yeah I'm going to cut that to 9 centimetres so I want three pieces that are 11 by 9. Okay, so let's get those bits out of the way so I don't get confused because it doesn't take a lot. So now I'm going to take each of these pieces and I'm going to fold it up to a, and leave about a centimetre. I'm not going to be measuring this um, about a centimetre. And this is going to form our little pockets, our little hangy pouchy things that we're going to put onto the back. So you start from the bottom, um, it's the most logical way to do this. And I'm just going to run a little bead of glue on either side of the slit, like so, and then I'm going to take one of these and I want the, the smaller side and I'm going to pop that along there and then I'm going to fold that down and I'm going to push that into place. Just going to hope that's not... Oh, I need another one now because I shouldn't have put one on here. <laughs> I should have put it on here. Another Tracy Fox mistake. So now I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut that next piece that I need. Oh, oh I need it back. Hang on. No, I'm going to this nine. So ignore the last few seconds. Where did that go? Is that it? Yeah. Um, you don't need one here. You don't need one there. You do not need one on that bottom pouch. On that bottom slit, sorry. But there you go. You like to see my mistakes. There's another one. There's another one for you. <laughs> so I'm going to put this one down. Um, somebody mentioned in my last video that they had trouble gluing vellum with Fabri-Tac. I've never had any trouble. I mean, this is very similar to vellum um, and it's sticking fine. So I'm not sure why you would have a problem. It's, 
it's not something I've ever had, unfortunately. Um, maybe if anybody else has, you might want to leave a little comment saying how you've overcome that. I've just not had, had the problem. I think as long as you don't slide it around too much and you let it dry, which obviously is going to be a bit difficult doing this tutorial, I mean, what I could have done is cut that one off, really. Now, the stitching doesn't actually catch this, but that's, I'm good with that. I'm good with that, although I could actually catch it if I wanted to. Um, on this one, I've stitched fairly close around the edge, which, you know, I quite like, and obviously these are not, you know, it's caught in a couple of places, but that is going to be you know glued down and it hasn't made it bulky um, it's obviously the things in it that's made it bulky so that is pretty much I'm just going to take this and make sure I haven't glued any of our pockets shut and obviously because there is only a slit and there isn't a um, <laughs> oh I thought I'd glued that closed <laughs> yeah it's, there's only a slit it's not a, a you know it's it's not as big a hole as the, the Tim Holtz die so um, it is a little bit tricky I suppose once you've opened it up and it you know you've got you've got stuff in there that's fine okay so let me just grab my sewing machine I'm not sure what kind of view you will get um, but I'm just going to very quickly sew around here I'm using quite a big stitch I'm using four and a half actually for this and I'm just gonna stitch around the edge now there's no glue this close to the edge so I'm not worried about it you know not not having dried for long enough It's a bit odd sewing at this angle. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. This is going to be a nice quick one. If it's quick enough, I'm going to come straight back with um, how I cut down that envelope. And that will be another very short one which I'm sure many of you will be pleased to hear. Okay, there we go, that's okay. Just... Okay, so I'm going to show you how I made, made that. It's again, very simple, just a piece of, that's a, yeah, just a piece of off cut really um, so what did I make this I made this six centimeters by three and a half so let's get rid of that six I put a brand new blade in for this and I can already feel that it's not you know brilliant so this piece I'm going to make five by, I don't know, let's make it five by two and a half. It doesn't have to be perfect because obviously we're not using the die so it isn't, it's not going to be perfect is it? Um, and I'm just going to trim the corners off and I'm just, I'm not even going to measure or, you know, try and do this in any um, what's it called? I'm not going to do it proper. I'm going to do it by eye. And then glue these two pieces together once they're inked. I mean, you know, how, how quick has this been? It's not taken very long. In all fairness, the die is probably quicker. <laughs> um, but this is hand sewn now. 
and I would stick that there. Um, now what I was going to do is on this one I was going to pop a little metal, a metal embellishment. Um, the thing is I need to make sure I can get something behind there. Yeah. Okay, so you could just pop on a card, card plate there, which would do the job. Absolutely. Um, I would like to use the metal one. And I'm using Fabri-Tac. Probably glossy accents would be better, but it always takes me half an hour to get glossy accents out of my tube. Um, and I haven't got a pin anywhere to hand. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. And I'm pretty sure this is going to hold because I've used Fabri-Tac for metal embellishments before. This is not exactly, this is not again, this is a fake Tim Holtz and it's very lightweight. So I'm just going to hold that in place. And I'm going to hope that my little piece of card, once I've decided what I'm going to pop in there, um, will still go in. Now it's glued. Now obviously it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. Yeah, so I can still get something in there. I'm very happy with that and I actually really like it. You could pop a picture, anything in there. So let's just take our little bits out. And obviously nothing's going to fall, nothing's going to fall through because we've got our little I mean you could use tracing paper you could use like I said copier paper it's it's not something that's going to be seen it's not something that anybody is going to look at the back so you could use absolutely anything you like and that is our little maybe I did glue it a little but no I didn't I didn't glue it it's not glued however it does look like this pocket is slightly slightly shorter yeah I think I made them 12 centimeters by 9 centimeters but what you could do easily solved easily solved is just swap over where you put things and then that's not that's not gonna hang out at the top now is it <laughs> <laughs> so there we go that's um that's my fake tim holtz pocket thing um i hope you found it useful <laughs> and i hope i didn't mess it up too much and hopefully i'm just going to check whether my daughter's home from school um because my other half was ready to meet her and shush her just in case um because they always come in and go hi mum, top of their voice um so um, that's that and I will be back hopefully in a few minutes and we will cut this envelope down. It's really straightforward and, and fairly nice to do so I'll show you how I do that. I will speak to you very soon. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Bye.